At 6.01, first on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Eric? There is, if you would please remove uh, item number five. Okay. Uh, Mr. Foster advising today that uh, we had an unexpected appointment, not this. Okay. All right. Uh, next, approve the minutes. The minutes of June 20th, 2022. Make a motion we approve them. I have a motion by Brian. Second. And second by Don. <coughs> Is there any discussion about these minutes? Look good to me. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I will abstain. You say aye, Judy? No, I abstained because I wasn't there. Okay. All right. The uh, minutes are approved. Three and one abstaining and one yes, not here. All right. Hi, Jess. Can you hear me? Hi, Bob. I can hear you. Can you hear All me? All right. Great. We just, we just voted to approve the minutes. Fantastic. Thanks. We, do we have any liquor control tonight? No. Okay. Next, new business. And number one, accept resignation letter for Panagiotis Korkulis. 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 Pete is a member of our uh, highway department, been with us for about six years, has done a phenomenal job, taking on uh, extra duties. Uh, he is the one that was responsible for the mapping of our culverts uh, in the, the uh, software that Waterlight gives us a model for. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, took on this spring the job of inspecting all our secondary road bridges and doing a full report photographs on that. Did an excellent job of that. He's a quality employee and we're going to miss him. Uh, he and his wife have reached a point in life where winter is no longer something they enjoy sharing. So they are moving to the sunny south mm -hmm. and have sent some nice letters of, of resignation uh, to both our highway park and the grass. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this resign resignation? The first one is from his position as the full time member. Yep. I'll make a motion with this. All right. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this? Did you say there's two separate resignations? Yeah. Here? Okay. So one's from EMS and one's from Highway. Hi we're doing Highway first. Okay. Yep. Send him a letter. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Next, EMS volunteer. Same person uh, from there. Do we want to make a motion for that? I'll make a motion. We accept his letter of resignation from Morristown EMS. Second. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Any further discussion on this one? All in favor say aye. 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 Jess? Aye. aye. Okay, any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Next, uh, EMS volunteer, Ad Todd Bannister. Uh, Todd Bill. Bannister is a uh, uh, EMS provider currently certified at the uh, the new level in Vermont, Vermont Emergency Responder. Uh, he's licensed at that level by the state of Vermont. He's currently active with another uh, EMS service within the district and uh, he's requesting uh, membership uh, as an EMS volunteer with Vermont. Okay. Do we hear a motion regarding that? I can motion we approve it. Motion by Brian. We have a second. Second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Jess? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Next, discuss ordering an ambulance. Bill? Again, sorry to I'm chewing up a lot of, a lot of agenda time here at the table. Um, we, um, as you're aware, we are on a five year replacement for ambulances. Uh, the newest one that we have is A2 which is, uh, which, uh, was uh, built on a 2018 chassis, came to us and put in service early in 2019. Um, 
our next replacement uh, would be for the 2013 ambulance that we purchased as a used ambulance in August of 2019. Uh, so that truck will be 10 years old and uh, has currently has 130,000 miles on it. Uh, it's, it's been serving us well and continues to serve us well, but it is due for replacement in the 23-24 budget year. Okay. Uh, currently, uh, if we were to order a new ambulance today, we're looking at a February 2024 delivery. Uh, so the concern that we have is that if we wait until the beginning of the 23 24 budget year to place that order, we're actually looking at a seven year replacement cycle, not a five year replacement cycle. Um, so we do have a uh, we do have schematics uh, and uh, a uh, quotation summary from Northeastern Rescue Vehicles to essentially build us a twin of the current A2. The difference being if this one would be on a Chevy 4500 chassis. Uh, the Ford F450s are not available, and we don't have even have a beginning of when they would be available uh, to be the twin chassis-wise to our current truck. Um, we entertain the thought of going with the Dodge Ram chassis, but we can't get it serviced locally. It would have to go either Newport or Montpelier for service. I'd like to keep that local because the duty crew can drop it off and. Uh, you know, will all be done right here in the area. Uh, so that left us with the with the Chevy 4500 chassis. Uh, the quote from uh, Northeastern Vehicles uh, for that truck would be $299,640. That would be placed into the 23-24 budget year uh, because that's when it would be expect. That's the next cycle for that money. Uh, in order to get that truck to us on a five-year cycle, which would be February 2024, uh, we are going to need to stand, sign a contract and lock in that price, lock in a Chevy 4500 chassis sooner rather than later. Uh, so that price quote that we have is uh, is good for 30 days. Uh, and I've also got the schematics here for you. And uh, uh, this article is kind of making the rounds because everybody's dealing with it about uh, uh, ambulance chassis shortages nationwide. Uh, so, uh, short of it is, we'd like to sign a contract with Northeastern for that vehicle, expecting it to be a February 24 delivery, uh, uh, where the funds would be uh, the funds would be in that 23-24 budget, as expected. Thank you, uh, and this would this would place us uh, having signed a contract payable on delivery of the truck would place us in queue and keep us on our five-year cycle. Where is the money coming out of? I was looking okay. at Tina. We have, we have budgeted in our capital budget for $50,000 a year for five years starting next budget, like Bill mentioned. Obviously, that will have to be raised if that's the price. The only concern is, is that there should be a clause in any contract we sign right now that if it doesn't pass a town meeting, we are not obligated to buy it. And that is in the contract. Yeah, and we're having to do that with our high-rate trucks too because it is such a long time before you get them after you order them. And um, our auditor says that it's not a problem, but you have to have that clause so you're not locked in financially. Right, I'm sure companies like this are used to dealing with municipalities that have that situation. So the fine print will say that Bill and is re responsible for the ambulance? Yeah, he's going to have to pay for it. <laughs> the last two sentences of the Congress. Yeah, if the voters reject it. Yeah. We can, we can set it up on a payroll deduct plan. <laughs> $10 a week. Yeah. <clears throat> for 200 years. So essentially, we need to, uh, in order to be in the queue for being on cycle for delivery in February 2024, we need to order in the next 30 days. Is that uh, is that price point a lot higher than what it was going to be? A, A2, A2 was 285000 and so that was in 2018. So it's not too, too much higher. Denny? The worst thing of it is just like in our fire trucks, every year you wait, that truck, that ambulance can go 10 to 15% higher. Yeah. So you're looking for us to approve a contract 
tonight? Yes, sir. And is there a down payment necessary with this no, contract? Sir. Okay. No, it's yes, on the Okay. And accept that's on the board. And Judy, Jess, Jess, go ahead. Um, and this amount, um, you said it's a little bit over budget and we will have to be going to the taxpayers to get it approved at town meeting? Yeah, the voters have to approve the purchase of it. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I'll make a motion that we, do you want, do we have wording on this? A motion to, to approve the contract with Northeastern. To approve a contract with As Northeastern for, for, for an A2. If you could say it's a sole source vendor, too. I know that they're the only ones around we can get it from, but um, it's good to say our that. auditors want us to, if we're not going to stick with our regular policy, they want us to vote that it's a sole source vendor. Yeah. Is that part of your motion? Huh? Yeah, I'm just okay. So, yes, a motion to uh, create a contract with Northeastern for and who's a sole source That's vendor? That's a sole source vendor for two hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars six hundred six hundred and forty two hundred ninety nine six forty four sixty six. Get some dyslexia there four six six. Four six. I do have some deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> you would you would have had it covered anyway. <clears throat> I'll second that. It was second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? Do we need somebody to sign it? Yeah. Uh, okay. You can uh, authorize me to sign it. I have the board collective for the motion. Sure. Make it part of it. Yeah, okay. I'll second that. All right. Oh, there's a question with that. Yep. Was that just the chassis? That's the whole ambulance. That's everything. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy, Jess? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. You want to sign that, Eric? Okay. All right, uh, since we're not doing number five, I didn't know if you heard that, Jess. Uh, we'll go to number six. Appoint TAC member, Hannah Farda, reappointment. I'm sorry, uh, what, what does TAC stand for? Uh, that's the Transportation Advisory Committee. It's a committee through, uh, that's a venture through LCPC. Okay. And it's a collection of all the towns that uh, send representatives to discuss uh, all things transportation that impact the, the uh, county. Okay. Uh, she's sat on the board for a year now. Uh, I was on the phone with her last week. She enjoys it. She'd like to continue doing it. She and I are, are uh, getting together to meet, uh, discuss different things that are back more still. A couple of things on the, on our plate right now that we're looking to bring to their attention. So that, that the voice of the TAC is a little louder than an individual warrantful voice, so it's the voice of the county. The council with that committee approves the idea that a letter is sent from the TAC to AOT with a recommendation to approve the project. And one of those is the uh, the lighting of the intersection of 15 and 15A. It's very, very dark and hard to see when coming from hard at night to see the 15A turn. Yeah. Uh, and the second one just came to us today. And it's been an issue we've put it out for some time now. But um, uh, we have a, a resident on Route 15, just prior to the price chopper, uh, just east of it. They are seeking to have the speed limit reduction occur further to the east of their residence. Uh, still a 50 zone in front of their house and a 35 zone within sight of their driveway, but traffic obviously going 50 by their house. We have a new development that's uh, coming into 15, uh, just down the road there, and then we have a small engine just prior to that. Uh, it is become busier. We have the Google Avenue, uh, the commercial area in there, and uh, traffic turning and entering from the highway. So uh, we're going to take that to the, the tack to talk to them about the possibility of AOT lowering the speed, uh, not more than it is currently posted, but 
for expanding that lower speed limit further toward the lower Coney area. I don't know exactly where we end up. Okay. That would be the request. <clears throat> All right, do I hear a motion to appoint Hannah Fardo? I'm going to make a motion we appoint her. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. Jess? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, old business. During old business? Seeing none. Approve the warrant. Do I hear a motion or approval? Make a motion we approval. I have a motion by Brian. Is it second? Second. Second by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Jess? Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Next TA report, Eric. I I'll start off with an apology. Uh, one of the items that I missed, we'll bring it up for our next meeting. Uh, we did have another resignation from the rescue squad, um, Zach Leggy, uh, just uh, recently achieved his paramedic certification and is taking a job full time for another agency. Uh, sent us a nice letter of resignation. I just did not get it into the packet. I forgot to mention the beginning of the meeting. We'll see you next time. Okay. Uh, he was one of our paid part time staff, so uh, we'll be opening that up uh, to hire uh, internally. In the very near future, this is last day of July. Uh, June 17th. Oh, the June 17th was yeah. July. Okay, so he's already done. Okay. Uh, Lori Martin. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's a lot of new use months. I hear uh, Yeah, July 17th. July 17th. This okay. is last weekend. Lori Martin, another big part timer with our rescue squad, uh, was selected uh, from the three different applicants that applied for the. Uh, newly created full-time position, uh, the position number five for the rescue squad. Uh, we already being promoted from the uh, paid part-time staff to the full-time staff. Uh, so I wanted to let the board know that that was happening. That position would be the one not to be backfilled as agreed upon during the budget season. So we're down to five paid part-timers, but we'll have five paid full-time staff as well. And uh, we, have, we will still have one vacancy with Zach's department. Uh, can't go without a lot of thanks for the 4th of July. I thought we had an extremely successful parade this year. Uh, tremendous participation, lots of hours we could see the work that was done on those floats. It was great to see uh, the Girl Scouts in the parade this year. And I don't know, maybe I just missed it in years past, but it was good to see a lot of the, their businesses run all out with their, their floats sometimes. And I think the people took to the, to the theme of the parade with the people. I think they did a great job. Uh, I want to thank our highway department for coming out early to get the cones out on Main, Portland, and Bridge Street to get those areas blocked off. I think it's a, the safest means for us to have our parade, and uh, the parking lines provide a good line for parents to keep the kids at bay so the candy doesn't get uh, thrown on our the tires. So. Uh, police department uh, continues to do a great job. They handle the traffic control again this year. Uh, Peter Dion. Set up our PA system once again. He's a man of mystery and, and marvel when it comes to this stuff. Uh, I don't know uh, how he puts it together, they never hitch. Uh, Trisha uh, spends untold number of hours coordinating the 4th of July parade well in advance of the 4th and uh, is an invaluable part of our team for sure. She's, uh, she's done a great job yet again. Uh, and I have to add. Judy, two months with us as a full-time employee, uh, took on the challenge of being the organizer on the Herald Street end of things. Uh, set up a booth to do a registration, the reg uh, registering of the floats and whatnot. She uh, enlisted the, the help of her wife, uh, uh, Sawyer. Uh, Sawyer was over there policing things up, so to speak. Uh, and uh, along with some other Judy's family members, she just brought the whole crew. Uh, but they really did a nice job and then, uh, she heard me go over to the booth and helped me with paperwork as the wind was blowing and a couple of folks were out of work. So she took the rest of the task of handing me the right page at the right time. And, uh, the crowd didn't know any different. So thank you very much, Judy. She was also, <laughs> she was handing water out too, all up and down the street. She was. She was. She was. She was. She was. She was. Good job. 
I noticed those numbers out of order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were the weirdest. Forty two or forty one came out of order. Yeah. Good job. Uh, I, if you all know that you were there, uh, our own Joey Hall from the Village Highway uh, Garage uh, proposed that his girlfriend successfully saw uh, out in front of our booth. It was a pretty uh, interesting event. I think the crowd was you as well. And 10 minutes ago, 10 minutes prior to the start of this meeting, I received a, an email from the Agency of Transportation, and we have been awarded the Star Creek grant for the Walton Road Bridge in the amount of $200,000. It's an 80-20 split, uh, so uh, we certainly will have more than 20% of that dollar amount invested in the bridge when we're done the construction, but uh, that's a, a huge help to our taxpayers as well. Yeah. That's all I have. <coughs> Any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Yes. yes, I wanted to ask if there was an update on the uh, Hutchins Street project. Fire. And five minutes after I got the AOT email, I got an email from uh, a combination email from both Evernorth and the Law Housing Partnership uh, giving just an update that the, uh, uh, the uh, cause of the fire has yet to be determined. Uh, most of the fire damage was uh, confined in one room. They did a, an awesome job of thanking our fire department and the other mutual aid departments for their fast response and quick extinction of the fire. There was uh, some heavy smoke damage throughout the rest of the building, but they are still in the process of having their insurance a company assess the damage and they'll come out with a projected timeline. Uh, certainly with the delay in having the building, but uh, they, they don't know exactly how long and they won't know until they get some more, <coughs> more work done. So. Okay, thanks Eric. All right, next, select board concern. <coughs> how about you, Judy? Uh, I won't be speaking tonight, thanks. Okay, Jess? Um, uh, two things. One, um, I attended the parking committee, um, <clears throat> the parking committee meeting last, uh, last Tuesday. Nice. And, um, I think we, um, started coming up with a lot of great ideas, um, for how to address concerns, um, around parking in town, um, revisiting some old ideas, um, and looking for some new creative solutions, um, kind of splitting our brainstorming into uh, the low hanging fruit, easy to um, fund solutions like um, signage and restriping and then, um, you know, bigger, bigger budget item ideas. So um, it was a really productive meeting. Um, and I really, um, it's a great group. And I'm looking forward to, um, to continuing to meet through this summer. Our next meeting is I think on the 26th of July. Um, and then my other concern, um, <clears throat> and I, I should have just touched base with, um, Eric and Judy before the meeting, but, um, and I, I wasn't able to, uh, I had a, a community member reach out to me, um, and let me know that, um, they were, um, they were disappointed that they hadn't heard about, a um, a planning council, um, meeting um about the new brooklyn heights um <clears throat> zoning change um and they were wondering um if if those meetings are also posted on front porch forum and on our facebook page um if they're only um posted by um uh like you know in um by printed notices around town and in the paper um so i was just wondering um if anyone could speak to that and if we could um, continue to to work on getting the word out a little more a little more frequently on on the elect electronic and digital sphere, all just all the neighbors receive notices of the hearing. So any of the uh, the neighbors right. or properties that are in that area receive. Right. Yeah. Notice. I I was aware I was aware of that. I don't believe that they were um, on. The, I know I did see that list too. They were not on, on that list, but um, there's well, someone who. I believe, like, lives close enough that they'd be affected. Sure. And as well, uh, Judy, you can give a list of where the, the meeting was posted. Uh, so uh, I know Todd posted it on the front window of the town hall in that window right there, of the town office at the post office. I don't know where else Todd does it, but if I put it on the website for Todd. Um, so those three spots that I'm aware of, for sure, the rest would have to come from Todd, Jess. I don't know 
Where have you done? Where he puts it? I posted on the front porch form because I read it there myself. Yeah. yeah. I did too. Okay. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. And then um and then the other, I guess the other question is I know that um people who sign up can get uh agendas emailed to them for our select board meetings. Um is that is there a similar I'm, you know, I, I, I apologize that this is not exactly um, a select board concern, but it is a concern from the community. Um, so is there another list that goes out for our subcommittees, um, you know, for people who are interested in the agendas or does that does that exist or not exist? If they do, it would exist through Todd. He administers both the DRB and Planning Council. I'm not sure if their such a list has ever been created. Oh, okay. So I'll just, I guess I'll speak with him and uh, see if we can make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, go with Todd. Okay. All right. I do know, Jess, that Todd is doing that. He does have me on a list, so he does send me planning okay. council agenda. Okay. It wouldn't be hard to add names, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, so they should just reach out. They should just email Todd. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Jess. Don? Well, a lot of this has already been said, but obviously thanks to the fire department for their work on Sunday morning. And I was out of town, I got an email from you and um, I'm glad that didn't go any further, obviously. And in regards to the parade, Eric, you've thanked everyone that I wanted to thank except yourself. Thank you to you for, uh, for all you did to make sure that happened as well as it did. So it was a good day. It's good to see everybody out in town. Yeah. Sent pictures to my kids and they were pretty happy to see the town out. Great. Thank you, Don. Brian. I want to say thanks and thanks, not just to Howard Fire Department, but the other ones that responded. They all did a great job by the sounds. And uh, again, I think the parade and fireworks were great. Uh, thanks. Very good. And I'll just echo everybody's thanks. I guess we'll thank everybody all the way around. <clears throat> it was great. All right. Uh, next, community concerns. Do we have community concerns tonight? Yes, I have. I have just one. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, with all the construction going on, the housing construction, and you've asked uh, the, the board has looked into the, the problems that could arise, the police, the traffic, uh, parking, uh, water and light. But one thing I haven't heard is what you're going to do about the, the uh, education part of it, the schools. You're going to have a lot of kids that are going to be starting up in that elementary school and the high school. Right now, my understanding is the elementary school is maxed out. Yeah, that's a question for the school board, not for us. That, that's not, that's not well, the I, town. I have a problem with that. The other one said, that the other ones that agreed to have all this housing and let, let you know eagerly to have all these people coming in, which is going to happen? There's going to be an influx of people, and I would think that you would have something planned or some way you can let people know up at the school that there's a plan someplace. Not that I know of. I mean, as I understand it, <coughs> enrollment's down as far as what I'd heard <coughs> in our in our school system. But <coughs> yeah, we we've, we've never had that communication between the, the town and the school. Well, for that might be, this might be a good time to have that communications. You're going to have a lot of kids looking for place of school. They're not. They're going to be over cramped classrooms up here in the elementary school. They're cramped right now. They have a problem in the elementary school right now. You bring a lot more kids in there. I, mean, I would just say this is certainly on the radar screen. Yeah. As you know, I've got a few connections with LSSU and the schools, and right. there it's not that they're not thinking about it. Um, the elementary school could be could be pretty full. Um, I think the middle school and the high school has capacity right now. But you're raising a good question. And, and, and Bob's responded to you appropriately in the sense that, you know, it's really up to Ryan, the superintendent, to really start looking at those numbers and let us know what's going on. Um, and 
you know, I don't know what kind of communication in the past the select boards had with the school board, but not yeah. for that reason, but we have, you know, we have met over capital projects and things like right. that. But it I is, served uh, on their capital project committee. But Ryan's just as aware as anyone else is about what's going on in town, you know. But I think it'd be up to you to go up there and tell them your concerns and talk to them because they're a separate board and there's also a... I can um, do that and I will do that. But yeah. But... We can certainly have a conversation with so you, you, I can't. I'm having problems understanding why the select board cannot communicate with the school board. Why isn't there ongoing communication? It's we just like we can't get into the school budget. We would love to get into the school budget, and we can't do anything about it. Right. Zero. Well, I, can certainly, I can certainly call Brian here and discuss this with him, see what yeah. his take is on it. Uh, I, I don't have any definitive answers, only that we've had the apartments full down on Bridge Street for some time now. And if there was a capacity issue that was of a concern, that would have been the start, I would think, the spark that would have lit the fire on that conversation. Well, I'll follow up with Ryan and, uh, and see what he has to say. Uh, you know, with the current housing that is already full, we've got the nine new building on uh, Jersey Heights that's full. <coughs> Many of the new housing projects are already inhabited, so I can ask him what what he sees so far for impact, and uh, if they have any projections. It's hard to project who's going to inhabit the apartments. Mm -hmm. um, if they have kids or not, or if they're retired or whatever. I'd say they're one and two bedrooms, of two bedrooms I think at the most uh, on the new construction. So it's difficult to say if they have one child, two children, you know, how many can fit in the apartments themselves, but um, I'm happy to have the conversation with Ryan. That sounds so, good. Well, and he yeah. could, you could invite him here too. Maybe sit here and explain in front of you. Because oh. we're, I'm willing to talk to the guys. They yeah, get there. Well, they don't communicate with the school. It, right. It's simply that the, the school would be the one to voice a concern with capacity. And I, I haven't heard anything yet, but that's okay. I can mm -hmm. still ask the questions. Yeah. Not to step on your toes, but I'm just about to be on committee with Ryan as well for a t totally different subject. But I'll step on my toes at all. I can. I can give them a little bit of a heads up that there that there is a concern. Sure. Whether it's warranted or not, but I mean it's a great question, Tom. Yeah. There's lots of people talking about this and wondering. Okay. Well, there's 136 unit going to be built too. You know, over the next couple of years. So who there's knows? A few kids coming in for sure. How many we don't know. All right. Any other community concerns? Any other business? Then I just like to thank our highway, our EMS, our PD, Snow Fire, Pulpit Fire, Elmore Fire, High Park Fire for all the help that we had on Sunday. And none of the groups complained. EMS did two transports up the cobbling. Highway blocked roads off until we cleared our engines. We had our diameter both at the Bijou and down at the bottom of Creamery Hill. And they talked to me on the radio towards the end. Upbeat. No. So. Nice. And actually the inspectors had to wait for us. They are out the middle, which is off. Hmm. And usually we wait around for them. Right. But he was already out in Milton, so he just had to come from Littleston. But I'd just like to let it be known on all the help that we received. Great. From other agencies. So. Sounds great. Thanks, Denny. Thank you. Any other business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Don, second by Brian. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Jess? Aye. aye. I don't know, Bob, you may have won it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We're now adjourned.